Good morning. Adam, I am so glad that you woke up this morning and you're here. I know we've got folks that aren't able to be here that are watching us on Facebook, but I'm so glad that y'all can come and see me in the flesh. Standing right here now, that I know you didn't come to see me. You came to serve the Almighty God. So, so I'm, I'm hoping and praying that's why you came. You didn't just come to see me because if you did, you're going to fall short. But the God that we serve is able. He's blessed me this week, and I know he's blessed you because you're here. So we just want to touch on some announcements that are gonna, that's going to be affecting everybody. Um, there's not going to be a youth meeting tonight, so... Um, take that time with your kids, you know, what, whatever you want to do, uh, rest, recoup, but, uh, but, you know, be good to your family. Take those opportunities. Monday night, we will be uh, having intercessory prayer here. We want you to be here. You know, uh, prayer is our way to talk to God, and, and I pray, uh, I need to pray more, I'll be honest with you. If there's 24 hours a day and I pray 23 and a half hours, I need to pray more. So I need to pray more, and we want y'all to come because everybody knows somebody that has a need in their lives. But we can't lift it up if we don't know about it. And there's power when two or more people are gathered in the presence of God and lifting up the needs of people. So if you have a need and you want to see God move upon it, Please be here. Make it a priority. I know God will richly bless you. Um, Tuesday night, we've got our SOS uh, meeting, the addiction support group. Um, we want you to come out for that. Uh, Six o'clock will be like food and fellowship, and it usually starts around seven. Um, Miss Wendy, Reverend Wendy Watson, our very own, is going to be speaking. So come out and show your support for Miss Wendy and, uh, and lift her up there. I know there's a lot of people in need in our church, and we're going to get to that shortly, but... Um, Keep Miss Wendy in your prayers. We would appreciate it. Um, now, we do have our Wednesday night roundtable meeting where uh, Pastor Rick and uh, Joy, they're going to be breaking it down. They're going to they're be feeding us. You know, we, we, we need to be fed the Word of God because that's the only thing that God has given us physically that we can draw upon each and every day. And I'll tell you, if you'll feed the spirit man, when the devil, the adversary, whatever, whatever form he comes in, when he comes at you, if you'll stand on the word of God, you will be victorious. So please um, keep that in mind. We are having our uh, praise and worship practice immediately following it. So if you want to be involved with praise and worship, come out. Uh, we'd love to have you. We. We want, we, we want to have an abundance of people to draw from because we've all got talents and we need to use our talents and gifts for the Lord. So please, we want you to come out and be involved so that we can uh, use those talents to the Lord. So please keep that in mind. Now we do have tomorrow morning, that's right, bingo is here again upon us. There's a sign-up sheet in the back, so we want you to sign up because we want to make sure there's a, an abundance of food to be able to to give you the strength to cover those numbers and fellowship. So please come out, sign up, and I know God will richly bless you. So um, at this time, I believe we've got a, uh, uh, well, let me make this other announcement before we go to our uh, video. Um, small groups, uh, we need, we've got sign-up sheets in the back. We want you to be involved in small groups because since we've done these small groups, I've got to know more about the people that I was in those groups with and, you know, when times are tough, and I mean, you, you know, they're absolutely pray. Seek God before you pick up the phone to call somebody. But, you know, there's something about being able to call somebody that you've got to know that you've got a bond with. And you can say, I'm struggling. I need prayer. And reach out. And if you don't have that connection, you can get that through small groups. God will richly bless you. So come on out, sign up, and we would love to have you. At this time, we've got a video that we're going to show. Praise the Lord. We thank God for what He did here in this village. He has a place to start also in school. And in fact, the Stone Lane Church who donate the machines. Now we have five machines. And we are supposed to start with 
five students, and uh, those students are the single mothers who are not able to continue to raise their children, and uh, also sometimes they use alcohol. But we will put us in our heart how to, we can help them. And also, this is the teacher who is going to teach them. Those are the students. We are going to meet others. This is so much. Yep. Amen. So that was just. That's the um, last month we were raising money um, to go to the sewing school. And that is just a small portion of what they've got. Miss Bennett is going in October and they're going to purchase more machines. So thank you for your giving because they're getting taught, they're going to be taught the word and they're going to be taught a skill that is going to bless them and strengthen them through these trying times and, and provide for their family. So thank you for your giving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, and I do just want to touch on our uh, mission emphasis for this month. Um, and thank you for what y'all have done, the monies that you gave, the, the clothing and that kind of thing. It is the Southeastern Carolina Crossroads Ministry. It's a 90-day ministry um, focused on men that ha are facing addiction, whether it be drugs or alcohol, that kind of thing. And at that low point in their life, if they're in something like that, they need Jesus and this is a Christian based ministry and uh, and they need resources you know you can't can't make it happen without uh, food to feed them and clothes I'm told that some of them just come in with the clothes on their back so thank you for your giving continue to lift them up in your prayers and I know God will richly bless you for what you've done and what you're going to do so at this time we're going to have our uh, meet greet and ties so I'm going to have a couple of ushers to come up and uh, y'all, it don't matter who, y'all ain't got to race. We got a couple in the back, and uh, and we're just gonna want you to take five minutes, shake somebody's hand, hug your neck, whatever you feel comfortable for. If you can do it six feet away, God bless you. But uh, let's just take this time and uh, hug somebody's neck.
praise the Lord. Thank you for, for sharing your love with each other. As we uh, transition here, uh, we're going to have a time of prayer. So I'm going to ask Pastor and anybody on our deacon board that, that wants to pray for those in need to come on up. And anybody that has a need of prayer, you know, the God that we serve is able to meet whatever circumstances you're facing. We do want you to remember Miss Wendy, and we want you to uh, remember Miss uh, Vicki Linky and Steve this morning. She is getting hospice at her home. But you know, I was talking to the pastor this morning, the God that we serve is able, whatever circumstances somebody is facing. When somebody goes into hospice, the man says, I've done all I can do. But the God that I serve can step in in those situations. And he can move unlike anything we could ever do if we could do it ourselves. So if somebody wants to come up and stand in for Miss Vicki, we'd love to be able to anoint her. Her husband is there with her side where he needs to be at. But whatever needs you may have, we want you to come up and we'll be glad to pray for you. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and, uh, and come up and be obedient to God. Amen. Please remember um, Mr. Connie, Miss Diane this morning. I'm not able to be here, but I know that, that they would be here if they could be. So let's remember them in our prayers. And any others, I, I, my memory fails me at times, but, but God is able to move upon whatever they need. So we're going to go to them in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you've done, oh God. Lord, we thank you that you have been our firm foundation this week, oh God. Lord, whether we have been victorious in every step of our way or whether we've stumbled and fall, dear God, you are still true to each and every one of us, oh God. Lord, you are here with us. We feel your presence right now. We know that you are able to touch these special needs, dear God. Lord, we pray that you would be with Miss Wendy this morning, that you would touch her and bless her and minister her, whatever need may be, dear God. Lord, we pray for... Mr. Connie, Miss Diane, dear God, that you would touch them, Father God. Lord, that you would meet the needs there, dear God, that you would strengthen their family and raise them up and bring them back to us, Father God. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch Miss Vicki Linky this morning and Steve, Father God. Lord, you know what they're facing, dear God, and you know the circumstances and the situation, oh God. But Lord, when you died on Calvary, when you said it was finished, oh God, cancer, COVID, sickness, and disease was finished, Father God. And Lord, we pray that through your miraculous power, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch Miss Vicki right now, oh God. Lord, we pray that you would heal her, Father God. We pray that you would bless her and strengthen her abundantly, oh God. That you would be with Steve. Give him strength, dear Father, through this time, oh God. And we pray that you would bless him abundantly, dear God. And Lord, we pray for all the other folks in our church body father god if they're whatever they're battling you are able dear god whatever miracle they need you are in the miracle business oh god father god we pray for the folks that are up here in the altar this morning whatever they need whatever they're standing in for or whoever they're standing in for father we pray that you would touch it and do it in a mighty way Lord, we pray your blessings upon this service father god Lord, as our praise and worship folks just lift their voices unto heaven, Lord, we pray that it would be a sweet aroma unto you, O oh God, and that it would just kindle our spirits and draw us closer unto you. And Father God, we pray that your anointing would rest upon our pastor, Father God, as he brings forth the bread of life today, O oh God. Lord, help us to be hungry and thirsty for you so that we can receive all he has for us. And Father, we thank you for what you've done. We praise your name. Continue to pray with us, folks.
stand with us as we worship. I read something on Facebook this week, and, you know, Facebook is what it is, but this was good. Um, the angels have been singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty for millions and millions and millions of years. And they've only gotten to holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They haven't gotten past that. We need to praise the Lord because he has done so much for us.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God. I'm excited. I always talk about when we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's to remind us of what he's done. Okay? We need to be reminded all the time because, you see, we have an adversary out there that wants to remind us of, of things that we, we feel like we failed or, or we feel like have not happened. But we need to remember who Jesus Christ is, and we need to remember the gospel. And the Word of God says that faith comes by hearing. Okay? We need faith in this world today. I'm telling you, you need faith. You're not going to go far without faith in this world today because you can look at everything out there and completely give up. I, I choose not to look at it that way. I choose to enjoy life. Amen. God said we only get one time around on this old earth. I'm here to tell you, you don't get, we're going to be in heaven someday, and I'm not sure how all that's going to work out. But what I do know about, about heaven is it's not like here. What we get to do here is, is so awesome that, that I, I just can't help but, but want to rejoice here. Amen. Even no matter how hard it is, even no matter we, we suffer loss, we suffer highs, we suffer lows, we suffer all those things. And yet here we live out this life and, and, I, and it's, a, it's a gift of God. And so today I, I want to talk a little bit about faith comes by hearing. I want to read from uh, Mark chapter 10 and starting in verse 46. I want to talk about blind Bartimaeus a little bit today. At least I want to start there because I feel like that we need to hear what God has done. We need, we need to hear and understand what God can do and, and what can happen. And, and when we cry out to God, what will happen. So, so I want to go ahead and read from um, Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 46. It tells us this. It says, Now they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude... Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood and commanded him to be called. And then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he's calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, well, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the reminder of your power. We thank you, Lord, that when we cry out, that you hear us, that you don't turn a deaf ear on your children. Lord, we thank you that you are the greatest thing in the universe, that you have life and death in your hand. Lord, we thank you for that today. We thank you for the faith that we can have when we hear how you have touched and moved, healed, and shown compassion. And Lord, we know that you are not a respecter of persons, but that each and every one of us here today can receive the very same thing by faith. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I, I, was, I was looking this over because I, I really, like I said, I, I feel like we need to be reminded sometimes of what God can do. The, the, the worst thing the devil can do to you is tell you you're not worthy of God moving in your life. That you're too sinful, that you're too lost, that you're too this or you're too that. And, and the devil wants you not to even cry out to God. He wants to already defeat you before you ever, ever say the prayer, before you ever whisper the words, before you ever do anything. The devil wants to already get you to stop. Because if he can put doubt in your mind and you don't pray, then you're stuck in that condition. It tells us this. It says they came to Jericho, and as, as he went out of Jericho, Jesus with his disciples and a great multitude, understand that Jesus, when he went somewhere, he, he went with a multitude. 
okay? People knew that he was a healer. People knew that he was a prophet. People knew all kinds of things about him, and he always drew a great crowd. No matter where he went, he had a crowd around him and also his disciples. Um, you know, that was what happens when, when someone is, is the Son of God walking in the flesh on the earth, that he could, he could speak and, and calm the storms, that he could raise the dead, that he could do all these things. And, and so he had a crowd around him all the time. Now, the people following him may not have been believers. They may have just been followers followers but they were there nonetheless but he also had disciples that walked with him that had seen all these things he and his disciples and a great multitude were, were leaving and and it says blind bartimaeus the son of timaeus sat by the road begging i want you to think about that for a second B being blind and being a beggar you know we we think about um physical blindness but what about spiritual blindness See, a lot of people are spiritually blind. Their eyes work just fine, but, but they don't see anything in the spiritual realm anymore. They don't think that anything is possible anymore. I'm here to tell you, we, we quote this all the time, with God, all things are possible, right? And we, we quote that, but then we put our spiritual blinders on when something happens and we automatically say, well, that's just not possible. But with God, all things are possible. And we have to open that up. We have to open up that, 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 that spiritual blindness in our lives. And blind Bartimaeus was blind on the side of the road. He's, he's begging. He, he has nothing. He's, he's just there. He's a, he's a beggar. I mean, he's dependent upon everyone around him. I want you to think about that for a second. Imagine being a blind beggar on the side of the road. Imagine that everything that you had in your life, that someone had to give it to you. I want you to think about that for a second. Somebody's going to have to keep him up. Somebody's going to have to look at him and say, oh, this poor beggar, look at him, he's blind, and give him a, give him a, a little bit of money, a denarius or something, to where he, he can maybe make it till the next day. And every day, he has no guarantee. It's not like the Social Security check is coming in the mail. He's on the side of the road blind and begging. And yet there's many believers that spiritually... They're on the side of the road, blind and begging. And they forgot who Jesus really is. They forgot the power of God. And see, that's what we do here when we gather is we remind one another. I should remind you, you should remind me of the power of God. What's possible? Amen? I mean, and we could start doing testimony in here. And every one of you could tell me something that God did for you that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt was an absolute miraculous event. Something where there's no way. It had to be God. It couldn't have been anybody. Every single one of us could do that. And that's the power of testimony that we remind one another what God can really do. That we're no longer a blind beggar on the side of the road, but now we have our eyes wide open and we know that there's one named Jesus that we can cry out to and he'll hear us in our deepest, darkest time, in our need. It says this, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, somebody had told him about Jesus. Somebody told him. I'm here to tell you. See, once again, faith comes by hearing. Somebody told Bartimaeus that there was one named Jesus. There was one. He was the Messiah. He was the one coming. He was the one that was going to be able to open the eyes of the blind, to set the captive free, to do all those things, to raise the dead. All these, he heard, he had heard about Jesus. And now he's on the side of the road begging. And he finds out that it's Jesus of Nazareth. So what's he do? Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He knew who to cry out to. Y'all, this world needs to know who to cry out to, but they've got to see it in us first. We've got to be the ones crying out. We've got to be the ones reminding them. We've got to be the ones telling them, hey, I know this one, his name is Jesus. And he can speak to your condition. I don't care what it is, whatever your condition might be. Jesus can speak to your condition. He will come to you exactly where you're at. All you got to do is cry out. If you're lost today and you don't know him as your Savior, cry out. Jesus, save me a sinner. And I'm here to tell you, guess what? He'll be right here. Amen? He hears a sinner's prayer. Some people say, well, God doesn't hear prayer of sinners. I'm here to tell you, he does too hear the prayers of sinners. Because all the time at these altars, we call people to this altar. And we're like, if you'll just cry out to him, if you ask him to forgive you, if you ask him to cleanse you and wash you and give you eternal life, guess what happens? Bam! Right? That's God. That's, what, that's our faith. That's what we've got our faith in. 
when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. But see, what happens is as soon as you make a step in faith, somebody's going to come against you. Right? As soon as you decide, you know what? I'm going to start going to, to Bible study on Wednesday nights because I really want to draw closer to God. And then somebody's going to say, well, you know, you know, that's a lot of time and, and effort. And, you know, you, you just need to do this and that. I mean, they start, they start bringing uh, things against you. See, the same thing happens to Bartimaeus. He's a blind beggar on the side of the road. He has no hope whatsoever. He's crying out to God. He's Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I mean, crying out. And it says many warned him to be quiet. Be quiet. How many of you, in your time of need, you were crying out to God, and people told you, you're tough. You're tough. You're not going to do any good. You're stuck this way. There'll be no healing. There'll be no, I had someone tell me one time, I don't believe in deliverance. And I said, well, you're looking at one that's been delivered. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, so you can say what you want, <laughs> but I know who my Savior is. There was many who warned him to be quiet. Be quiet. You're nothing but a beggar. You're blind. You're on the side of the road. You don't even deserve the master to stop and speak to you. I mean, and that's the way I think a lot of people, they feel when, when, they, when they come to church or when they, when they come to worship, they come in and everything that you did wrong this week, right? The devil's got it right in front of you. And right now, what you're looking through is you're not looking through grace, you're looking through guilt. You're looking through the condemnation. That's right, sister. You're looking through condemnation. You're looking through, through sin. You're looking through everything that the devil has thrown against you this week. And you come in here today, and, and, and you're like, man, you know what? I, I need Jesus today. And you're crying out to him right now. Maybe you're crying out right now in your innermost being. Maybe you're sitting here right now, and you're like, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Man, I've had a week. You ever come in here when you're like that? Yeah. And you come to get relief. You don't come to stay the way you I'm here to tell you that Jesus will not leave you in your mess. He'll take you out of your mess if you'll allow him to, to deliver you, if you'll allow him to, to get you out of it. And, and so, but what do people say? Oh, you just need to hush. You need to hush. Don't go up to that altar today. Don't go to that altar this morning. When Rick gives that altar call, don't go up there. It's not going to do any good. That's what the devil's telling you. But I'm here to tell you that my Jesus says, come on up here. Amen. The waters have been stirred. There's, there's miracles possible. Things can happen. I'm telling you. And, and we got to understand that. But, but so many, well, be quiet. Don't stop. Don't say anything. You're not worthy of the Son of God to touch you. And that's what happens to a lot of folks is they go to God in an unworthy state. I'm here to tell you, if you're under the blood of Jesus Christ, you're worthy. Amen. It, the Bible tells me that, that if we confess our sin... He's faithful and just to forgive our sin. Cleanse us from all unright. Well, that means all. That doesn't mean some, right? It means all of it. I mean, let him, let him, you know, let him be who he really is. Don't listen to the, the crowd. Don't listen to the people that tell you you're not worthy. But listen to Jesus. Son of David, have mer mercy on me. He cried out all the more. All the more. Look, I, I'm here to tell you. How many have like prayed one time about something and then just quit? You ever done that? I have. I just figured, well, I'll pray once about this. And... But how many of you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed? And then the breakthrough comes. And then the deliverance comes. And then the situation that seemed to be an immovable mountain in your life is all of a sudden moved. All of a sudden, that person with that attitude that you didn't know what you were going to do about, then all of a sudden, their attitude changes. Their mindset changes. Everything changes. You're like, oh, that's God for sure. I'm telling you, we've got to be persistent. We can't just, just cry out one time. If Bartimaeus would have just said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, and everybody told him, just hush, oh, shut up. Just go over there. You're a beggar. Go over there. Shut up. If he'd have, if he'd have been quiet. Jesus would have kept right on going. And I want you to think about that in our prayer lives. Do you really come to the throne of grace? Do you, do you beseech God? I mean, you, you hunger and thirst and say, Lord, I am going to, you, you promise me. And I'm coming for the promise. There's promises in the word of God. We, we're, we're, we're allowed to, to claim some of these promises, y'all. 
Amen? We're allowed to claim these promises. They're not just there. We're allowed to claim them. We're allowed to use them. We're allowed to stand upon them. We're allowed to stand upon the Word of God. And when, when the devil comes against us and tells us to be quiet, then we just need to cry out all the louder, Hallelujah, Son of David, have mercy on me. And you know what's going to happen then? Jesus stood still. He stopped. And that's what happens every time, uh, every time a lost soul comes to an altar. Every time someone cries out and says, Jesus, save me a sinner, he stops. The creator of the universe, the one that spoke the universe into existence, and you cry out that sinner's prayer, and he stops still. You got full, undivided attention. Amen? So he stands still. He commands them to be called. Come to me. Come to me. Every time we come together and there's someone lost in this church, Jesus is calling, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. It's up to us to come. Faith without works is dead. You've got to attach the two. If you believe he's the Savior, act upon it. If you believe he's the healer, act upon it. If you believe that he's the provider, act upon it. If you believe that he can restore you, act upon it. If you believe these things, then act upon it. Don't just believe things, but, but act upon them. Jesus stood still, commands him to be called. And then they called the blind man saying to him, now see, now all of a sudden everything changes. All of a sudden, Jesus stops and says, hey, get, I, I want to see that beggar. Bring him over here. And once, once that change takes place, notice what happens to the atmosphere, right? I mean, the whole atmosphere changes. All of a sudden, you got the great multitude, you got the disciples, you got everybody there. When they heard that he's crying out, they warn him, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. But he keeps crying out, crying out, crying out. And Jesus stops and says, no, I want to see him. Well, now notice what happens to the atmosphere. Be of good cheer. Rise. He's calling you. Do y'all remember the first time that you felt Jesus calling you? Do you remember that? Do you remember that? See, I've never forgot that. Amen. I've never forgot when he decided, hey, you know what? Come on. Where I cried out to him and I said, Jesus, I need you. I, I, I need a Savior. I don't understand all this, but I need you. When he started crying, he said, well, come to me then, Rick. Come on. Come on. Come to me. And when I, I remember what that felt like, I remember. Be of good cheer. Rise. He is calling you. Maybe that's you today. Maybe he's calling you today. I'm, I'm here to say, I don't know. Somebody's going to be at this altar this morning because they need to be touched by God. I mean, I just believe that with all my spirit. I believe there's a reason why we preach what we preach. I believe that the Holy Spirit takes all these things, puts them together. And I believe that somebody is supposed to be up here this morning because Jesus is calling you right now. He's calling out to you. Oh, you may be spiritually blind on the side of the road begging and not knowing what you're going to do next. But Jesus says, oh, man, come on. Be of good cheer. I'm calling you. Come on down. I want you to notice something that happens in this. And every time I read this, I always try to stress this because here's something that, that you got to understand. Jesus needs to be the highest thing in your life. He needs to be what you really ultimately trust in, okay? Look, look, I believe in medicine, I believe in doctors, I believe in all kinds of things, but I'm here to tell you that without Jesus, none of it works. Amen? That's my highest, that's my highest hope. I, my hope is in Him. I mean, and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you this, I mean, we always laugh about some of these things, but, but I always like to, to tell this story about a fellow that was, was caught in a flood one time. And he crawled up on top of his house, and the waters were rising and rising, and he cried out to God and said, God, save me. The rivers are, are rising, and the Lord said, I'll save you. Don't you worry. You're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. You just stay up on that roof. I'll get you out of here. So the waters started rising. They got up to the bottom of the eaves of the house, and, and some guys come up in a boat, and they rode up there, and they said, hey, man. They said, get in. Come on, man. The waters are rising. Man, you are gonna, if you stay here, you will drown. You will die. 
Oh, no, 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 I'm not going anywhere because God told me he's going to save me. And I believe he's going to save me today. And they're like, look, dude, man, there's a, there's a seat right here. Just hop in. Come on. And he said, no, 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 not going. So the boat leaves. Well, now the water's got up even higher. Now it's about halfway up the roof. And the man, he's sitting all the way up on the peak of the roof. And, and, and the waters are getting higher. Lord, you said you're going to save me. Lord, come on now. You got to help me out. Lord, get me out of here. Come on, I need an extract right now. Come on. Another boat comes up. Hey, man. Look, we don't know if another boat's going to be coming or not. It's getting really bad. We could barely get to you. We heard you were down here, and we, we just want you to get in the boat. There's safety in the boat. Just come get in the boat, man. Nope, not going. God says he'll save me. So they're like, it's your last chance, man. Nope, not going. So the waters continue to rise. They go over the top of the house. The man drowns. Gets to heaven. Lord, you told me you were going to save me. He said, look, man, I sent you two boats. You wouldn't get in them. When God sends a boat, get in it. Amen? When God sends the boat, get in it. The word says that blind Bartimaeus, throwing aside his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Now I want you to understand something about his garment. That garment that he had was the only thing he had between him and the world. That garment was the only thing he had to keep him warm every night. That garment was the only thing that kept out the elements. That garment was, was the only safe thing, the only thing that he had in the world to keep him. And I'm here to tell you that I know that he trusted that garment. I know that when he was out in the rain and that garment was keeping him warm, he had trust in his garment. I know that when he, when he put that garment over him, that that was a, a sense of protection, that that was something that covered him up. But I'm here to tell you that in order for God to move in our lives, we've got to throw aside the garment. We've got to throw aside all of those things that we trust in besides God and allow God to be God in our lives. We can't have another trust that's higher than Jesus. We can't have something bigger than Jesus. We need to be sold out when it comes to Jesus Christ. He threw aside his garment. He threw aside that one thing that was keeping him safe from the world. He threw it aside. I want you to understand something. There's a blind beggar. That garment was probably the most valuable thing he had in his whole life. That was the only thing of value, the only possession that he had. And he threw it aside when he came to Jesus. I want you to think about that for a second in your life. What have you got between you and Christ? that you need to cast aside? I mean, that's a hard question, right? That's a question that you got to really think deep and hard about. you got to pray about. What is there in my life that if Jesus Christ came to me and he said, look, I, I want to minister to you, but you need to cast this aside, what would it be in your life? What would you have to cast aside? It says throwing aside his garment, he rose and he came to Jesus He's finally opened himself up. He's finally allowing himself to be ministered to. See, a lot of folks come to church and they got the cloak on. They're covered in the garment. They're not really showing you who they are because they're scared to death to, to throw away that garment, to cast that aside, to let people see what's really going on in their life. And so they come in all covered up. And then when they leave, they still are all covered up. And they've not been ministered to. But he threw his garment he rose, he come to Jesus. I invite some of you today to cast your garment aside. Cast your garment aside. Let Jesus minister to you. I don't know what your need is today, but let him minister to you. Whatever that thing is that you stuck in there between you and God, cast it aside today and let Jesus minister to you. He wants to minister to his people. So Jesus answers and says to him, I love this because because it's just it, this is one of those questions that Jesus asks and I don't I don't <laughs> I don't know how to react to it when I read it on the page because you have a blind beggar on the side of the road and he Jesus asks him what do you want me 
to do for you. I mean, you're almost like, duh. <laughs> I'm a blind beggar, man. I can't see. I'm sitting on the side of the road. I've got nothing. I've cast my garment aside. All I got is you. What do you want me to do for you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, but here's the thing that I've also noticed in the Word of God. The Bible says, you have not because you ask not. What are you willing to ask Jesus today? If he came up to you today where you're sitting right now and said, what do you want me to do for you today? What do, we, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do for you? What would you tell him? Because you may think and say, oh, well, you should know Jesus. Look at me. I'm a mess. My life's a soup sandwich. I, I got all this stuff going on. What do, you, what do you want me to do? But he wants us to speak it. He wants us to tell him because that's an act of faith. When you can speak something, that's an act of faith. Lord, I need you to heal me. Lord, I need you to deliver me. Lord, I need you to set me free. Lord, my, my finances are an absolute wreck. I, I, I need some help. I, I need a new job. I, I, I need, need physical healing. I, I need my family. My marriage is a mess. Put us back together. Make us as we should be. God, you, there's so many things that we could, we could say. He says, what do you want me to do for you? And I want you to think about that today. You know, before you leave here today, if there's something on your heart, if Jesus has met you here today and he's asking you, what do you want me to do for you today? Don't leave here without telling him. Don't leave here without telling him. Because if you walk out that door, you walk out the door, it's all over. It's all over. So the blind man says to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Oh, my goodness. It's, isn't it difficult? Isn't it at the hardest thing to admit what the problem is? Right? Everybody else looks at you and says, I know what your problem is. 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 But when you can say what your problem is, right, that's the hard part. It's like everybody else sees what the problem is. Obviously, he was a blind beggar on the side of the road. But he has to admit to himself, look, I, I'm blind. I, I, need, I need help. I need help. Maybe today's your day where you finally admit you need help. Isn't that the hardest thing? Isn't it? Isn't it? We're, we're so quick to help one another, right? Somebody calls you and they need help, man, you're right there, right? Johnny on the spot. Look, I'll help you out. Yes, sir. I'll give you a shoe. I'll, I'll give you a shirt off my back. I'll do anything you want. You need gas? Fine. Light bills? Whatever. We'll do anything in the world for somebody else. But what about us when we're in need? How fast do we pick the phone up? And say, hey, I need help. A lot of times we don't, we don't even make the call. Because we're like, I don't want to let anybody know. I got this problem. I don't want to let anybody know about this. I don't, don't want to let anybody know about But see, Jesus knows. <laughs> he knows everything. He knows all about us. What do you want me to do for you? The blind man says to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. He finally admits, I, this is what I need. I, I mean, and I'm telling you, in prayer, sometimes we need to pray. We need to pray very specific. Not these shotgun prayers where you're covering everything. But what do you need from me right now? The Holy Spirit speaking to you. The Holy Spirit prays through us. The Holy Spirit helps us pray right. That, you know, we say, well, I don't know what to pray. I'm here to tell you you've got a Holy Spirit in you that will come alongside you. And he'll take that prayer and he'll make it right. He'll intercede for you. He'll send it to the Son, sitting next to the Father, that it'll all get through. But we've got to pray it. But we've got to be specific. What do you want me to do? What is it today that you need? You need deliverance? You need healing? You need salvation? You need provision? What is it? What is it that you need? But see, we won't ask. We won't say we sit right there, zip it shut, put a lock on it, swallow the key, not saying it. I'm here to tell you, Jesus already knows. It's not like you come in here and you put your, put your outer garment over you, you're hiding from. He knows exactly what's in there. He knows every thought that goes through our mind. He knows everything we did and everything we've ever done and everything we're ever going to do. Because he stands outside of time. He's already got it all written in his book. It's all right there. He can look right through and pick it up. Oh, what, what were they doing on this date? No, whatever. He knows everything. What do you want me to do for you? Rabboni, that I might receive my sight. Then Jesus says to him, 
Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. You know, I love it. I love the book of Mark because most things in Mark happen immediately. If you go through your word study sometime in the book of Mark and see how many times something happened immediately. It wasn't like they're waiting 30 days, 60 days, three hours, whatever. It was immediately, 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 immediately. And I, and I, and I love that, that when I read that and I see that. And, and he tells him, he says, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. So he didn't just stay on the side of the road. He wasn't a new and improved beggar with sight now. To where, oh, I'll just stay here and beg. Now I can see what I'm getting, right? Amen. No, he was like, look, I'm going to get up and I'm following Jesus because I've received my sight. I'm, my, my faith has made me well. i am received my sight. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm heading with Jesus. Wherever he goes, I'm going. I'm here to tell you today that there's some of us here today that we need to receive our spiritual sight. That we need to receive what, what he has for us and, and follow Jesus. Don't just, don't just get healed and stay where you're at. See, a lot of folks, they just want to be, look, I want to be more comfortable in the spot where I am. He's not calling you to comfort. He's calling you to service. He's calling you somewhere. He's calling you to that, that difficult place. He's calling you to that, that, that hard place. He's calling you to that narrow road that leads to life that few enter compared to the broad road, the broad path that leads to destruction that almost everybody goes down. He's calling us to the narrow path, the narrow road. He's asking us, what do you need? Hallelujah. And when we tell him what we need, then he's going to expect us to take what he gives us and follow him. Not just stay the way we were. Our Jesus is powerful. He's mighty. Pat, we're going to go ahead and close. Um, so I ask you to come up. But I never want us to, to miss the opportunity. Amen. To miss the opportunity for what God wants to do. Would you all stand with me this morning as we go ahead and dismiss? We, I, never, I never want us to miss the opportunity. Because God never ceases to amaze me when we gather together to worship him. When we read the word of God, when we, when we allow the Holy Spirit of God to move in our midst and move in our lives, when, when we gather like this and we remind ourselves and we remind one another of what he can do. And I invite some of you today. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Savior.